Hey what's up everybody, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the RC four wheel drive winch front bumper with Stinger. And I'm going to include details such as a close up look of all the areas of the bumper, installation of the winch. This is a 9.5 CTIS RC four wheel drive winch. And I'm going to include as much detail as possible as there is not much information regarding these two products. Now let's have a closer look at the bumper. The main base of the bumper is made from aluminium. The stinger bar is made from a steel. It is welded into the mounting points and the mounting points are screwed directly into the bumper and they are very secure. The front of the bumper has a slot hole here and two threaded holes on the side for mounting of the fair lead. I also want to add that the fair lead screws into this part here but the screws don't go all the way through into the actual winch. It is just through this part and on this part so the winch is secured to this part here there is a gap and the fair lead is here so it doesn't go all the way through into that that's one thing that surprised me during installation there are four holes in the bottom which are for mounting the winch when you first buy your rc4 wheel drive 9.5 cti or cti s winch the mounting base plate on the winch is mounted backwards so all you do is undo the four screws and turn the mounting plate the other way screw the mounting plate back to the winch and then you can screw the bumper directly to the mounting plate there are eight screws included with this bumper four longer mounting screws and four short mounting screws depending on how you wish to mount whichever winch you buy not mentioned in the description of this bumper there are actually mounting holes for leds the holes themselves are three millimeter meaning it can take three millimeter LEDs, but I'm sure if you are quite handy with some tools, you could probably bore that out to five millimeters and you would probably be able to mount some five millimeter LEDs if you wish to do so. There seems to be a screw hole there next to the mounting hole for the LED, but there doesn't seem to be any mounting hardware or light buckets, light sockets that is available on the market at this present time. At least I couldn't find any anyway. This bumper is absolutely solid and I'm beginning to really like it, especially once it was all mounted up because it is so heavy and chunky. So when you first take the original bumper off your Jolande 2, your RC4 wheel drive D90, the original space saving and light bumper feels very, very light and a little bit flimsy. But once you mount this chunky thing on there, it turns the front end of your D90 into almost tank-like. The bumper comes with light lenses that can be mounted on the front. RC four wheel drive suggests that you use a gooey glue to stick them in. Also comes with a little Allen key there. They included the Allen key for the mounting screws, but they didn't include the mounting screws for you to mount it to your model. And that's because they would suggest that you use the original screws that came with your Jolande too. But there's only one problem with that. The original screws that are installed on the Jolande 2D90 are for countersunk holes. Needless to say, the original bumper has countersunk holes. But this RC four wheel drive Stinger winch front bumper does not have countersunk holes. They're actually flat. Which means if you install these screws on here, they will stick out like that. So if you do buy this bumper, be sure to get yourself some steel button head cap screws in the size of M3 by 14 millimeters. They're widely available everywhere, but if you're buying this bumper, you might as well put these in your shopping cart as well. Here is the product code, and here are the dimensions. When you screw the bumper in, don't forget to use some blue Loctite on these screws. Once your bumper is mounted to the chassis, it's now time to install your electronics and also the winch. So for the lights, it was very simple. All I did was install some three millimeter LEDs on the back there, I'll show you. This is the three millimeter LED on this side, and this is the three millimeter LED on this side. At first, I was going to epoxy them in place, but decided against that, as if there's ever a time where I have to service this or replace the LEDs, I will never be able to get them out. So instead, I used a very tough hot glue just enough to secure the LED in place there, as you can see. And I did the same on the other side. Each LED is wired in parallel with a resistor of a six volt regulated power supply coming off the light control unit. 
all mounted neatly in my receiver box. And we'll get to that part in a minute, but I just want to show you how I wired these and where I routed the wires. Now these heat shrink wraps have been placed over here, over here and over here. And once those have heated up, they kind of harden to create a shape and they retain that shape. Now, if anyone's doing this, do remember that you do not want to run your wires across the top here because when the hard body goes on top, that's exactly where it's going to rest. And if it's resting on those wires, eventually it's going to wear those wires out, flatten them and probably damage them. So you want to route them this way to the back and just across the back here, being careful not to touch the motor. On this side, it's rooted on the side here. And on this side, it's rooted on this side, just coming across there, neatly into the chassis, being very careful not to touch the motor at all. I'm now gonna show you the lights on the bumper and what they look like when they're turned on. I'm also gonna just kind of turn the winch on just so that you know it's kind of functional. So these are the lights. I've programmed them to come on with the rear fog lights as well. So all I have to do is turn left and push the function button. And that's the fog lights there. The three millimeter LEDs are rated at 5,000 MCD. Here's the winch function. I've been having loads of fun with this. It's really fun. Now let's talk about the installation of the winch. As I said before, the winch is just screwed in place via the base plate there, which needs to be turned around. Under close inspection, it seems that the winch fouls the bumper, but it does not. There is actually a 0 0.0, probably 0 0.2 millimeter gap here. As you can see, it is completely free floating on the sides. Now the winch wire exits on this side, but instead of coming to the back over here and crossing over the motor once more, I decided to route it along the back of the winch in between the bumper and the winch and have it safely wrapped in some more heat shrink, routing on this side, being very careful to curl it round over here so that when the hard body comes on top, it doesn't foul the wire as the hard body does actually come up to this part here, very close to there but installing it like this, it misses it completely. It's best not to have this wire too tight or completely perfect to the length. And that's because if ever you need to remove this bumper or even this winch, it's gonna need some play. So instead of freeing up the wire from however far back you wired it to, this is actually gonna give you enough space to remove that winch or uninstall the bumper for whatever reason. The winch wire comes all the way up to here and at this point I've installed an extension that is also wrapped in heat shrink. If I need to service or remove this all I have to do is cut the heat shrink and the plug will unplug from there and the wire runs all the way here all the way back underneath the chassis neatly tucking all the way back here over here. As you can see none of the wires foul the motor and there is a clear centimeter gap between everything. Now, those of you wondering which extension I used to extend the winch wire, it was their nine inch extension pack, except that only came up to here in which I had to splice and dice the wire and extend it about another two inches. But that's just me. Your installation will probably be slightly different to mine. If you run your wires underneath like I have, be sure that they don't hang out the bottom. They have to be to the side of this chassis bar here, very close in. What I've done is I've sealed it in some more see-through shrink wrap so I can see what's going on. And what you have to do is you have to test your suspension, making sure nothing catches and clamps anything. Keep your wires very safe and just zip tie them where they need to be zip tied so that they clear everything, nothing fouls each other. And that's how you're gonna look after your wires. Now my wire had to go round here and up there, as you can see, and that's a point where I was afraid I'd get some abrasion. So I just gave it some more sealing there with some very, very thick heat shrink or wire wrap. And that's gonna keep it safe as it wraps around the bar because there are some, I would deem aggressive edges or some straight cut edges there. And as that wire comes up, you can see this wire here being protected in some more heat shrink. 
and then we get to the wired control box from RC four wheel drive. Now they don't sell this as a set, you have to buy them separately. So if you buy your winch, be sure to get yourself a control box. Installation of this box is very simple. So the wire from the winch just plugs into here. And this wire here goes into your receiver box. Now I wanted to keep all my wires in the same place together, neatly running in the same direction. So this is how I've wired it. I've realized that if I route them in this orientation, they all fit sideways just like this very nicely into the original box because I didn't want to upgrade that. I'm just going to give you a very slow run of the wires. So if anyone wants to have a slightly closer look at how the wires are routed, how I've bunched them together, and how I've tried to tie them. You don't have to keep pausing the video. You actually have a close look from here just like that. I hope this is gonna help someone out there. And now let's have a look at what I've done with the receiver box. So hopefully you can get a close enough look at these wires and understand how I've wired everything. I was very surprised that everything could fit considering what I had to put inside here. But have a look at these wires. This is how I've wired these and how I've kind of shaped the wires around each other. So rather than stacking on top, they loop around each other. Now, if you're wondering what that white thing is in the bottom there, I actually had some spare room in here. And rather than having all the components rattling around and sliding, I decided to remove that area of emptiness by giving it just a neatly cut piece of polystyrene. So as you can see, I've wrapped and looped the wires that need to be shortened coming around here over here. And in the bottom is the receiver box. The receiver is mounted that way, just like that. I'll show you in a second. But this is the SYRC light control box. There's two light control box, one that goes into the lower chassis and one that goes into the upper hard body. They are connected to each other by one wire. And you do that when you connect the hard body on top. All the wires that come around this side are looped around each other just to shorten them so that they go into the ESC there and the servo there. These two are expansion ports and I've used the HB expansion port. As you can see, I've looped and wired it round. It comes around here, goes around the back and it comes over here. This is actually two wires, one red and one black in some heat shrink. And that is what controls the two three millimeter lights on the bumper. I'm just going to raise this control box so you can see what's underneath. And as you can see there, just peeking through, that's the receiver box there. And the wire's neatly tucked under, along with the antenna there. Now, if you're wondering how I fit the lid on without crushing all the wires and destroying everything, it is because I have removed the reinforcement bars across here. All I did was dremel them out just to give a bit more room. They were very high across here, but I found out once you put this on, it doesn't want to close because those bars are in the way. And one way of testing if any stress is being placed from the lid into the components is all you do, very gently put this on like so, and gently tap it. If it doesn't close, it means the wires and components are trying to push it up and fighting for room. And if you screw it down in those cases, it's going to put extra pressure on all the components, which doesn't sit well with me very much. So what I did was I compact everything as much as I could, removing tiny bits of material off here. And now all I have to do is very gently push this on top. Don't push it down with any force, just lay it on top. And it should close itself under its own weight, even though it only weighs a few grams. And that means all the components are nicely placed. Let's close this back up. And that's nicely packaged in there, nice and snug. Once you've installed everything, have another good look at all the wires. Make sure they're not crimped or packed together. Uh, sometimes when people zip tie their wires together, they pull the zip tie so much that it actually scars the wires and damages the wire housing. So you want to pull these zip ties up tight, but not to the point where they're actually impeding the wires movement, just so that enough that they hold them in place, but they don't damage them. Let's flip the chassis over and have a look at the wires at the front and see what they look like from underneath. Now, as you can see, none of the wires I have run past the actual chassis. They're either beside everything or on top of it for obvious reasons. Obviously, this is going to get scraped and scrubbed against stuff. And if you don't have a protector plate, which normally goes here, then your wires like mine are going to be exposed to all of the rocks and everything that you're going to be scraping against. 
and that's why my wires do not dip below any of the hard metal points. And now I'm going to talk about some of the small minor points that I wish I knew before I purchased this, or um, it's not that I have a form of regret, it's just that there was no way for me to know this information until I purchased and installed and played with everything. One thing I did want to know is what stops the winch from over pulling itself? As in once the winch hook has reached its resting point, what stops it from trying to pull this through the thing? And that is you do. Once this runs out of rope and once the winch hook has reached its end point, if you carry on winding in, it will try to wind in until probably, I don't know, maybe the motor stops itself, I haven't gone that far, or maybe even at the point where it burns itself out. But this is one thing I didn't know. I was thinking maybe that the winch has a sensor when it physically cannot pull the hook anymore, maybe it will sense that and it'll stop, but that's not the case. It will just keep pulling and pulling until, I don't know, maybe this will be pulled off or something snaps, but I'm not too sure because I, I haven't done that yet. Once you get to this point, it's best to stop your winch a couple of millimeter before it reaches the point where it's gonna pull everything inside and probably damage it. So hopefully that's gonna clarify a few questions if anybody had that question. But that's it guys, that's my video on this bumper. Hopefully it helps someone out there. I'm just gonna ramble on now. The video has officially ended, but I'm probably just gonna talk a bit more about relevant and irrelevant things. You may leave if you wish to do so, or you can just continue listening to me waffle on about stuff. So when I first got this bumper, or when I was first purchasing this bumper, I did think it looked really blocky and almost like just a steel girder that you're gonna weld onto something. But in actuality, in person, it really, really does pop. I think the form factor of it, of how it looks like this huge girder, really accentuates the look of the front of the Defender. And the stinger bar on top, which I'm not usually a fan of, really, really made me happy that I had it because I realized how sturdy and how tough this bar is. It is just a big bar of steel. And it is gonna add a certain aspect of protection to the model, but it does look quite beefy with it. I mean, you guys seeing this on video now is only probably a fraction of what you see in person because of all the angles and obviously the light is not gonna capture it correctly. But in person, it is very, very nice. I love the way it sits and I love how far it sticks. It's really jarring, but at the same time, kind of smooth and subtle. And I really love that. Once it arrived, I was super happy. Everything fit like a glove. One small thing I would suggest that they could improve on is maybe including those two screws. I mean, I don't mind if it was me personally, I don't know about anyone else, but buying this bumper, I wouldn't mind giving a couple of dollars more if they included those two screws, because then I wouldn't have to get the bumper and then realize, hang on a minute, these two screws aren't really made for that kind of hole, so I'm gonna to have to go out, do a little bit of research, and order online separately again, and then wait a little bit longer to get those two screws in, and then install it like that. I know not many people are gonna care about whether it's countersunk or not. I mean, it's gonna screw in, and it's gonna hold it in there. But for me personally, it was um, a, a very small touch that I wanted to get right. The correct hole for the correct screw, I guess. I've been having a ton of fun with this winch, by the way. It's a load of fun. I mean, pulling stuff along. Obviously, I've just been playing with it on my desk and pulling light objects or slightly heavier objects and having fun with the immense pulling power of something so small. I mean, the motor in there is tiny. Oh, uh, one thing, in case you guys, any newbies out there, like myself, I'm a noob too. I'm very new to this hobby. When you buy this, it's not waterproof, okay? So I know there's a lot of videos and so many fun adventure videos of RC crawlers going in water and crossing rivers and stuff. That looks really fun and some of them have winches. Um, I, as a noob myself, I saw that and I thought, wow, that looks so fun. I really wanna do that one day, you know, maybe just get one of these and have it the way it looks and then cross a river and that'd be so fun. Do understand your screws are gonna rust a lot of your components are gonna get a lot of corrosion in them. But if you can do something to prevent the corrosion, do understand that the winch is not waterproof, okay? And a lot of other components are waterproof-ish. You can do something to waterproof them even more. It's a lot of work from, I haven't done it myself, but from what I've seen and what I've read, it seems to be a lot of work, lots of fun, 
but in the off chance that corrosion does get the better of your vehicle, it's going to be a lot of screws you're going to be replacing. Just a word of warning, because once I, I really want to do that one day. I mean, go through rivers. Uh, who doesn't go through snow? I mean, blast through sand and stuff. It just looks fantastic and really, really fun. But there is going to be a, a really immense amount of maintenance work afterwards. Okay, so just bear that in mind. My Defender doesn't have the Land Rover badge at the moment here. I did go out today. I don't know what badge I want right now because I was looking for either a silver and black badge that goes there or the green and silver lettered Land Rover badge or the green and gold lettered Land Rover badge. I did see about five Defenders today in person close up um, a lot of them were on a mud trap real defenders and i saw that it most of them had a green badge there and i think it was silver lettering for what i could make out so i'm going to try and get a badge for there if ever i can find one and order one in that's what's going to go there one of the main things i wanted to do with this model was that i wanted to run it off nickel metal hydride batteries okay the nim ones so the ones that they came with it really old technology batteries or cells that not many people use anymore i don't think it was something i used with my tamiya radio controlled mark one mini back in the early 90s and right now they're on the brink of going obsolete i'm pretty sure but that's what i wanted to run this off and it runs everything perfectly in fact um i had a bit of a scare the other day when i was running this i turned all the lights on so we had obviously the bumper lights headlight fog light and all the rear lights and the hazard lights and my interior lights and number plate lights so everything was going and I started to test the motor and as I tested my radio gave a warning bleep and said battery and then I thought oh god you know it's I've over I, I've drawn too much the what I really wanted was the nickel metal hydride uh, pack to be able to handle everything and I, I must have exceeded its maximum amperage draw so it's given a warning but then the alarm stopped and then so that seemed fine but as soon as i gave it throttle it kept going off and luckily for me it wasn't actually the nickel metal hydride battery in this it was actually my the the cell the batteries inside my transmitter i changed those and everything was fine so that was a big relief so everything's running the way i want on this at the moment it's looking the way i want it to look and i'm starting to, i'm getting to a point where i'm really happy with the uh, with the way this is going i'm very very happy i've changed suspension a couple of times on this already i've gone from the original springs that never worked to the old man emu 70 millimeter shocks then I tried some 80 millimeter shocks the other day. They sat a bit high and I kind of re replaced the 70 millimeter ones back in there. And I like the ride height a lot at the moment. There is a slight issue with that, which I'm going to be going into in another video. But I guess that's it for today's video. That's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, thank you very much for staying with me. Thank you very much for watching today's video. And I really hope the um, some of the insight or information I gave or had or recorded here is going to help someone else out there and give people the chance to have make an informed decision before they buy anything and that's really the point of these videos so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time guys another really good hidden feature about this bumper is if everyone is getting together for an rc crawl and someone has forgotten to iron their shirt you can heat up the bottom of this and use it as an old-fashioned iron